Hi everyone and welcome to this next session in the student zone. Uh, before we kick off the session, I do need to draw your attention to the Microsoft Code of Conduct. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this before, but this is a friendly space. Be nice. And so without any further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Shana Matthews doing Hello World in three languages. Take it away. Hi everyone. I'm just getting myself on camera really quick. Hello, thanks for the intro, Jim. Yeah, my name is Shanna. I um, work at Microsoft. Um, I work with students a lot as part of my job. Uh, and I'm asked a lot, usually at hackathons by students, by other beginners, um, what programming language should I learn first? Or maybe what programming language should I learn next? The answer to that question um, is not super straightforward. It really depends on your goals, what you want to build, your experience, what you already know, um, and what your interests are. But I put together this talk to kind of help people get an answer to that question. Uh, this talk is really designed for people who have maybe started learning a programming language or have learned um, a programming language, but aren't familiar with a ton of them. Um, and the idea of it is just to introduce you to some other popular programming languages out there to compare and contrast a little bit between them, uh, to talk about some quirks, and maybe discuss some use cases and why you might gravitate towards one language or another. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. OK, so the first thing I'm showing you is a C++ program on the screen, and this is what's commonly known as the Hello World program. If you've ever done anything where you're trying to learn how to code, this is almost always the very first program you write. Um, and the idea of that is just that it's really simple and we want to try something really simple to get started just to make sure things are working. We kind of have somewhere to play around with. We have a, a firm ground to get started on. So you can see it here in C++. All this is doing and all the program does is just print the words hello comma world exclamation point to the console. Um, so I think probably a lot of you have seen this or heard of it before. But um, I didn't know and I, I wondered when I was putting this together where it came from. So I thought I'd share a little bit of the background of the Hello World program with you. So the Hello World program is widely credited to the guy on this slide. Um, his name's Brian Kernahan. If you're a huge um, C nerd, you might have heard of him before. He's really famous uh, for writing a book called The C Programming Language. And C is an old but um, still pretty popular programming language that we are um, not going to talk about today. But um, you saw some C++ on that previous slide. And we are going to talk about the language C Sharp. And both of those languages got their name from the original C programming language. So anyway, Brian, this guy, wrote that super famous book about C. Um, and he wrote a book right before that one that was called A Tutorial Introduction to the Programming Language B. Um, and if you're kind of, you know, guessing, uh, you're probably guessing right. Um, yes, B is the programming language that came before C back in the early days. And it was that book about B where the first example of this Hello World program was found. So when um, that went over well, he put it into this book about C that got super, super, super popular, um, and it's stuck around ever since. So the Hello World program is a really good way to kind of just get your feet wet in a new programming language. And today we're going to go over a Hello World pro um, program in a few different languages um, that are really popular and really useful, um, Python, C Sharp, and JavaScript. Um, and if you guys are lucky, I might include a Hello World program in a language that's not so popular and useful, but is also really fun. OK, so the best way to get started learning any language is really to just play around with it. So that's what we are going to do today. You guys should all be seeing um, my editor, I'm using Visual Studio Code here. Um, I like it a lot. And before I really get started, I do want to give a disclaimer that if you are um, an awesome Python 
C Sharp or JavaScript programmer, this is probably not what your setup looks like. Um, this is a super basic setup I have here that's flexible enough to support me going through all three of these programming languages without having to switch a bunch of windows. So um, don't stress out too much if it doesn't quite look like your home setup. All right, so what we've got here basically um, are a bunch of different folders uh, that show us um, uh, hello in a bunch of different languages. So we're just going to go through these in order and look at um, what a Hello World program looks like. So what you're looking at right now is Python's Hello World program. I can tell you Python is definitely one of my favorite programming languages. Uh, it's really known for being simple. It's known for being beginner friendly um, and easy to read. And I think just looking at the Hello World program makes that really obvious why that's the case. Um, even if you have never used Python before, you can probably look at this and sort of get a guess as to what's happening and why. So all we're doing here is defining a new variable called message, um, putting the string hello world into it, and then printing it out. And so um, running Python is just as easy as using as saying Python and then giving it the file name you want to run. So there are some quirks to Python. If you know a different language and you're trying to get started with Python, one of the biggest weird things you're going to run into right away is um, that Python is white space sensitive. That's pretty rare when it comes to programming languages. As you'll see later, many programming languages use things like brackets and semicolons to um, structure how you're writing the program. But Python uses white space. So I'll give you a really quick example. Um, we are going to do something to make our program say hello build since it is build time. So I'm just going to add another variable. Um, I'm going to define is build and set it to true. And then I'm going to add a conditional here. So um, let's see if we can run this. Great, okay, so we ran it and it changed what it outputted to hello build, um, just as I suspected it would. So uh, one thing if you're familiar with other programming languages, as I said, um, is weird, is the white space thing. So if you look at this, um, you might have expected an if statement to have brackets around it telling the Python what goes in that if statement. But Python actually doesn't use brackets, it uses white space. So if I did something like got rid of this, Python actually wouldn't know what was happening anymore. And if we tried to build this, um, we get an error. Um, Python says, hey, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. And that's because it's white space um, sensitive. So we need to put our spaces back in there. Another issue that people might run into with Python is if they're using tabs versus spaces. I have my editor configured so that everything is, is spaces, even my tabs, but that's another big problem that people can run into. So you need to be careful when you're using Python. Okay, so for all of Python's weirdnesses and quirks, why would you try to use Python? Um, Python, uh, as has been mentioned before during build, is really popular in data science. Um, it's kind of the programming language of machine learning. Uh, it's also really popular in backend web development. It's gained popularity in the DevOps space. Um, and Python is great because it has a lot of community support. There's a lot of people out there who love Python, the libraries for Python, answer questions about Python. And that makes it um, a friendly language for people. Another stereotype about Python is that it's slow compared to other languages. Unfortunately, this is true um, in a general sense. There are ways to make it faster. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but yeah, Python can be slow. There's a few reasons why that's true. One of the interesting reasons that I will mention is about typing. Um, and I'm not talking about typing on your keyboard, but I'm talking about the types of variables. So when we defined our variables here, you'll notice that we didn't say anything about what type of variables they are. Um, VS Code, I've got a nice Python extension installed, so it can tell me um, if I hover over this what type my variable is and that it's a string and that this is a Boolean. And that's great, but I didn't have to tell Python what they were going to be. 
Um, and Python is nice enough to let me do something where I switch the type of the variable um, right in the middle of the program. And lots of programming languages don't like it when you do that. So you can see we had no problem switching this string type variable um, to an int type variable. So changing it from words to numbers. And Python said, that's, that's cool by me. All right, so um, that's Python. We're gonna move on really quickly to another awesome programming language. Um, C sharp. So C sharp and Python are pretty different. Um, as you can just see by this Hello World program in C sharp, it looks really different than the Python program. Um, it looks a lot more complicated. I can tell you it's not. It's doing the exact same thing. Um, it just has a lot more structure to the way you have to write the program. It's not white space sensitive like Python is. So if I wanted to, um, I could put this all the way over here. I could put this all the way over here. It doesn't matter. Um, I have told Python um, what belongs where with my brackets and with my semicolons. So I think that's nice. I think it makes it um, easy to know exactly where you're at, exactly what things are. You can see it very visually. But it does mean a whole lot more typing <laughs> if you are um, writing the C sharp code. Um, so what would you use C sharp for? C sharp is a super popular programming language for making um, Windows desktop applications. That's kind of its, its legacy, but it does a whole bunch more than that. Um, you can make it for backend services. It works really nicely with Azure for cloud computing. Um, you can make games with C sharp using Unity. Um, one of the stereotypes about C Sharp is that it's verbose. And I think you can kind of see by this example that that's, that's a little bit true. Whereas the Python, which I'll switch back to that, the Python um, Hello World started with just two lines. This C Sharp Hello World is 13 lines without doing anything extra. Um, and that's because it's very strict about the way that it organizes the code. Um, the other thing I'll point out, so I was talking about typing. So C Sharp is um, a strictly typed language. So that means we told it what kind of variable message here is going to be. We told it it's gonna be a string. And if later we try to tell it that it's something else, it's not gonna like that. So I again have some nice extensions for C Sharp installed here in Visual Studio Code. Um, so I don't even have to build this to see that it doesn't like this. Um, it's gonna, it won't just automatically let me convert this um, string type to an integer type. Um, and that is helpful in a lot of ways for C Sharp. It makes it so that um, the, computer code that is compiling and running your code always knows what to expect. And that's one of the small things that can make C Sharp a faster language than Python is. Okay, let us move on quickly to JavaScript. Wonderful. All right, so this is JavaScript. Again, it's just two lines for our hello world. Um, so that might make you think, oh, this is super simple, just like Python. Um, JavaScript is a little bit like Python in some ways, but it's not like Python in some other ways. Um, for example, JavaScript is not white space sensitive. You're gonna use um, brackets to separate your code blocks in JavaScript as well. So I can do the same thing I did in Python. So is build true. I want to check that later. I have to use my semicolons again. And I have to use brackets. Hello, build. Awesome. And we're going to run this with a node. OK, so again, we can see that this picked this up fine. And if we did something silly like change the white space here, JavaScript wouldn't have a problem with that either. Um, JavaScript is really known for being a quirky language. Um, one of the reasons it's quirky, I'll show you quickly. Let me switch to. Um, it has a, a few different quirks. 
One of the weirdest ones is um, the way it does equality checking. So if you're checking if two variables are the same, and I will do that here. If I get rid of these, can not use them anymore? If message equals message two. Console.log. Console.log. And you can see this nice, um, not same autocomplete that I'm getting. And we'll get rid of this guy too, just to make it clear. So it's really quirky. So we defined two variables here that are pretty much the same. They look kind of the same. Um, and if we check if they're the same, JavaScript agrees, they are. But if we do something funny here, we add a, a, a third equal sign, uh, which is not common in other languages. And we try writing it again. Uh-oh, now they're not the same. Uh, the reason for this is a thing that is called type coercion in JavaScript. I won't go into it too much unless you guys have a lot of questions that you'd like me to answer on it. Um, but basically it's um, with two equal signs, you're trying to make the, the two variables as close as possible and then check if they're the same. And then with three, um, you're not trying that hard to make them the same first. Um, so that is JavaScript. It is the language of the web. So if you wanna do web development, JavaScript is your friend. Awesome, okay. Uh, we'll start questions in just a second, but I promised something fun. Um, so, so far I've been showing you programming languages that are super popular, super useful, um, used in big domains, um, and a lot of people are using them. But not all programming languages are like that, actually. Um, I'm going to show you a programming language that is um, based off of lolcats, which were kind of like the height of memes when I was a child. I don't know if any of these look familiar to you guys. But um, lolcat is a programming language that is based off this, these funny um, memes. And so it has a very strange and fun syntax. Um, and the expectation isn't that anyone would actually use this programming language to build the next big app, but developers uh, like to have fun and we like to make programming languages that are fun to create and fun to create in. So um, <laughs> lol code is one of those programming languages. Um, so here's an example of the hello world program in lol code. Here's another example of a lol code program just to show you how ridiculous programming languages can really get. Okay, let me jump back to one more slide and then I will answer some questions for you guys. Okay, so if you enjoy quickly looking at a few different programming languages, Rosetta Code is an awesome resource to um, do basically this on steroids. Uh, it's a website that has tons and tons of programs and tons and tons of programming languages, and it shows you examples of each of those programs written out in this language. Um, the last little slide I have is just a comparison table between the three main languages we talked about today, but I am happy to answer some questions from you folks now. Awesome, that was really cool. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, obviously, my first question is, uh, I can have cheeseburger? Yes, you absolutely can, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Those from my generation will recognize that from the uh, from world code. Uh, yeah, we've had some awesome questions come through on the chat. Uh, I think the first one to, to do, can you zip back to your JavaScript code? Uh, yes. And the question is, why in message two did you use new string instead of just writing hello world in quotes? Yeah, so, um, I did this as an example to show you some of the weird quirkiness of JavaScript. Um, it's actually not super common to define strings in this way in JavaScript. It's usually, people usually just do it like this, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll dive into it just a tiny bit to explain what's going on and why I chose to do it this way. So as I mentioned, we can have two equal signs, you can have three equal signs. So when we had these two equal signs here, um, we were comparing these two variables, right? We're comparing, we're comparing message and message two. And so message was defined as um, 
a um, basic string type. And message two was defined um, as an object string type. And when we did the two equal signs type of comparison, JavaScript did its weird thing called um, type coercion. So before it actually compared what was in these objects, it tried really hard to make the objects the same type first. So it basically, you, it didn't really do this, but you can imagine when it was checking if these two were equal, it stripped off this new string um, and just compared bloop, hello world to bloop, hello world. And then it decided those are the same thing because they pretty much are. Uh, and then when we put the third equal side in, um, it was doing very strict comparison. So it didn't do that coercion. It said, hey, this is um, this string object type. This is this basic string type. Those two couldn't possibly be the same. They're not even the same type of object. Um, and it's not that intuitive, and there's a, a couple other instances where JavaScript does funky stuff like that that's not quite intuitive, that makes JavaScript the, the weird, quirky um, ant language, maybe, of, of the web. So sticking with JavaScript quirks, another question is about semicolons. In JavaScript, is it required to put semicolons on the end of each line? Yeah, you'll see I didn't put semicolons at the end of each line, so it's certainly not super required. It's generally good practice. It's considered correct to put semicolons at the end of your JavaScript, but um, it, it's going to work either way. That's another weird quirk about JavaScript. If we tried to write our C sharp code without semicolons, it wouldn't compile. Um, Python is also funny there. We don't use semicolons, um, but they're, they're possible. But JavaScript, you generally should use semicolons to break up your lines. Um, and I think there are some ways you can make it required as well. OK, so sticking with actually a JavaScript and, and a Python question around object oh, orientation. Yeah. Uh, so is Python an object oriented language? And how about JavaScript? Is that an object oriented language? <laughs> Great question. Yeah, in fact, uh, Python and JavaScript are both technically object oriented languages. They don't kind of make it front and center as much as C Sharp does. So C Sharp makes it very obvious that this is an object oriented language. You really can't do anything without creating an object. Um, but both Python and JavaScript kind of behind the scenes are using objects for everything as well. And it's very common and best practice to also do what you're kind of doing in C Sharp here um, in terms of defining classes, creating, instantiating new objects with, you know, new. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so they are they are both object oriented programming languages. All three are. Awesome. Um, so another question has come around white space in Python. Mm -hmm. So does it, well, one question was, does it make a difference how many spaces you use? And another one was, if you kind of muck up the white spaces, will it cause the whole system to collapse with critical errors? What will happen? <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, the important thing with Python is consistency uh, internally to your own program. So I'm not sure if I can do a good example of tabs versus spaces because I, I have my editor configured to always change my tabs into spaces, but you can see, um, let's switch back. So you can see I put one space here um, and we are using four spaces here and it, it doesn't like that. Um, but if I wanted to do constantly three spaces as my white space indicator, Python would be fine with that. If I wanted to constantly use tabs as my as my white space indicator, Python would be fine with that. I, I can't demo it super well with the way my um, environment is configured right now, though. Um, there was a second part to that question. Uh, what is does it matter how many spaces which you've demoed and what will happen if you get the spaces wrong? Uh, oh yeah, what will happen? Yeah, I pretty much showed it. Um, so what happens if you get it wrong is that Python, it won't work at all. It won't work at all. It's not gonna run your code. Um, Python goes through line by line when it's trying to run your code and, and, and do each line. Um, and you're just not gonna get anywhere if you have your spaces and, um, and tabs wrong. 
Awesome. OK, so more questions around Python. Uh, so somebody has said, as someone who's only ever coded using HTML script, is Python a relatively good place to start? I graduated college this past Saturday and accepted a career in space technology. Awesome. Oh, oh you. That is fantastic. Yay. Yeah, that's uh, super cool. Get more into the machine learning end of it all. Uh, and someone else has said, what language is preferred for AI? So is Python great for AI and machine learning? Super cool. Heck yes, it is. Um, yeah, congrats to you for graduating in a super cool field. That is fantastic. I really think Python is, this is my personal opinion, but it's the best programming language to learn. If you're just getting started, if you just want to learn one programming language, I think Python is your language. Um, it's just used across so many fields. It's very flexible with how to use it. Um, and yes, it's incredibly popular in the data science and AI space. Um, researchers love uh, using it because it's super friendly. It's good for prototyping. You can write code quite quickly in Python. And it's become almost the de facto language of data science and AI. R is a little bit used as well, but um, as a person with a, a true computer science developer background, I, I don't really, I don't really mess with R. So Python is is the way to go. Which leads on to another question: Is which language be your favorite to write programs on that you've tried so far? I'm feeling some strong Python love here, but is that your? <laughs> Yeah, Python love for sure. Um, my favorite, yeah, it's got to be Python. It's got to be Python. Lol code is obviously a, a close second. <laughs> I've done the most like programming professionally in C++ actually, uh, and I like it because it's very strict. It's very interesting, um, but it's not, I'm not going to lie, it's not super beginner friendly. I think Python is more fun and Python's my go-to if I'm writing something that's not for work. Uh, so just stick with this like kind of language question. Someone said C sharp versus Go. We're kind of stepping oh, aside oh, there. Oh. <laughs> Any thoughts? Yeah, um, I can't comment too much. I've only just barely played with Go. I know there's a lot of love around that language, and I I would personally love to dive into it more. Um, I think it's super cool, and it, the domains that it's used in are really exciting. Um, I love C Sharp, though. It's just a nice. Um, it's just a nice, friendly language. It's got such a good ecosystem around it. It's got great support um, in Visual Studio Code, but especially in Visual Studio, which is such a great environment for developers. So I think if you're a beginner, C Sharp is still a great place to go. But if you've already kind of mastered a bunch of languages, go for it. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> uh, more questions about Python. Um, well, I guess language in general. I Somebody's asked that they're interested in robotics. So what is languages best for them for doing robotics? Ooh, uh, that's that's a hard question. I'm not that into robotics. Um, I think it depends on the robotics. There are some like robotics where you have to kind of use old school languages just because of the platform, like Fortran or something. I don't even know. Uh, but for a lot of like IoT new robotics, Python and C Sharp are both uh, pretty well supported languages. I will say um, if you're doing IoT or robotic stuff with Azure, C Sharp is a great place um, to dive in. Awesome. Another another fun question on um, on languages, which I imagine the answer is going to be no. But do you have Hello World in Algol 60, Snowball, or Fourth? The question <laughs> is probably follows up with Yes, I'm an old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not. I do not. Um, didn't come quite that prepared for this session. I thought I was doing a good job with just the four languages that I showed you, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else? Well, more questions here. A lot of good questions here. Is C Sharp more powerful to build VR and AR applications or JavaScript? Ooh. Mm. I'm not sure I would say one is more powerful than the other. I think so. For me, in the AR VR development I've done, um, I did that um, with the you know mixed reality toolkit and stuff um, as a you know Windows. 
uh, a developer with a Windows background. And I used C Sharp for that, C Sharp and Unity. Um, and that was a really great stack. I, I enjoyed doing that development. Um, and so I would 100% recommend it to someone who's interested. I know there's a lot of good talks um, at Build and during, in the student zone about AR, VR development. So I would encourage you to pop into those, um, find out what they're using, um, and ask questions there too. Awesome, cool. We're pretty much at time, so thank you very much. That was an awesome session. Uh, we have all the content available. If you head to aqua.ms slash student, uh, students at build, you better get hold of all the code that Shana showed off. Uh, also, please, please, please fill out the survey. We want to know your thoughts on the content so we can keep making great content for you. Head to aqua.ms slash student zone 2020 survey and use the session code COM206 or 208, sorry, 208 um, to give your feedback on this session. Uh, and with that, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of Microsoft Build. Thanks, everyone.